event. Welcome to the AIA Film Life Live Better Press Conference. Now, it's been a pretty busy day that we've had so far. It's been a quite a day, and I'll tell you all about it in just a little bit. But if you heard my introduction, I was uh, called out as a fitness professional, aside from being a host and a lover of life. I truly am. And that's precisely why, ever since I started hosting events for AIA Film Life, they have motivated me even more, inspired me to truly live a healthier, longer, and better life. With the different events and all the stuff that I learned at our events, I truly am now, more than ever, a lover of life. We will give you tips, share insights a little bit later on as to how you can do that for yourself if you haven't yet. If there's one message we are hoping that you leave with by the end of this afternoon, it is the fact that you are going to live a healthier, longer, and better life, and you're going to start taking steps on doing that today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. Since the year is about to come to a close, you're going to start today. We hope that you get that message. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday afternoon with all of us. But you know what, folks? We are going to introduce to all of you later on our Philam Vitality Ambassadors. You know who they are. We've got Nico Bonzico, Solen Yusa, Will Dasovich, Mon Gutierrez. They are joining us. And of course, a very special guest. How privileged are we that we are going to be up close and personal with the AIA Global Ambassador. Do you have an idea who it is? Anyone? No? No, you're pretending not to. Mr. David Beckham is going to be up here on this stage in just a few minutes. Now, um, we've been keeping David pretty busy today. He had a very early start because uh, this morning we had a Live Better Tips football clinic at the McKinley Stadium. This was facilitated by the Phil Life Sevens Football League led by its founder, that's Anton Del Rosario. Uh, the kids, they also got to join us earlier at the Live Better Expo. We're thrilled to have had the opportunity to play with the professional football players, to do drills with them, to get tips from these professional coaches and of course David Beckham himself. They even they were even challenged in an exhibition match. After the games, David, together with all of the Film Live Vitality or Film Vitality ambassadors, that's Mon, Will, Nico, and Solet, took the stage at the Live a Better Expo, where they should be shared their own stories about the importance of protection and wellness and what they do to maintain their healthy lifestyle. You will hear their stories in just a short while, but before that, allow me to introduce to all of you AIA Film Live's Chief Marketing Officer to officially open today's program. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause please for Mr. Leo Tan. Thank you, Jenny. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to AIA Film Live's press conference. You know, we're so excited today because it's a big day. They say that when you are in the company of people you admire most and people who inspire you to live healthier, longer, and better lives, it's going to be a fantastic moment. Do you agree? Do you agree? You know, uh, we have with us a global icon, a global figure, AIA's global ambassador, Mr. David Beckham. He will be joined by Film Vitality ambassadors, Nico Bolzico, Expecting Mom, Solen Yusa, Will Dasovich, and Mon Gutierrez. They are five different individuals with five different perspectives on how they live a healthier, longer, and better life. As media partners, you know that you are also influencers. So I urge you, when you listen to them, jot down notes, write about it, tell the Filipinos on how they can live healthier, longer, and better. So with that, Thank you for coming over. We will have a lot of things to talk about. Marami salamat po at magandang mga. Thank you very much, Mr. Leo Tan. Ladies and gentlemen, we all have our own stories, our own experiences, even our own motivation, our own inspiration as to why we want to live a healthier, longer, and better life. And all of us do what we can to make sure that we have a bright and fantastic future, but not only for ourselves, for the people that we love, our family, the people that we need to protect, the people that we need to care for. 
That is precisely why AIA Film Life continues to develop products that will allow us to protect our future by being financially secure and they also have brand ambassadors who inspire people to live healthy and be protected. Later on, everyone that will be taking the stage and sitting on these couches are the exact people who live it every single day. They live healthier, longer, and better lives. And you can see it. When you follow them, you know that they walk the talk. Join us this afternoon to tell us a little bit more about all of AIA Film Life's products. We have to introduce our special guests as well. Please welcome AIA Group Chief Marketing Officer. A round of applause, please, for Mr. Stuart Spencer. So let me wish you a big mother high. Oh, hi. Let me give you the context for today. Today is an auspicious event, um, and you are a very luminous audience. Today marks really the first day that we move AIA Film and Life in a direction concentrating vividly, transforming our business, focusing on how do we really enable healthier, longer, better lives, driving transformation while improving the lives of our customers. Let me give you the background, because there really is a story here. We, in Asia, are in the midst of an epidemic. If you are the largest Pan-Asian life and health insurer, you need to be concerned. We're concerned. We're concerned about the deterioration of lifestyle trends. We're concerned about the surge in lifestyle diseases. As Asia has become wealthier, Asia has not become healthier. And a key example is here in the Philippines, where more than 70% of disease diagnosis are lifestyle related, driven by lack of exercise, poor diet, too much drinking, too much smoking. You know what I'm talking about, driving diabetes, cancer, stroke, hypertension, heart attack. As the largest life and health insurer in Asia, we must take a stand. We must do everything in our power to reverse these trends, but there's more. As we look to the future, we're concerned about sleep deprivation, we're concerned about air quality degradation, we're concerned about mental illness, we're concerned about anything and everything that can conspire to impede the ability for people across this region to lead healthier, longer, and better lives. This is not a marketing campaign. This is not a one-off. This is not a gimmick. This is not the flavor of the month. What I want to impress upon all of you is that we each need to take a stand to do everything in our power to reverse these trends. 33 million customers, how do we reverse these trends? The key, and this is where you guys come in, is driving behavioral change. The one way we can reverse the inexorable is to provide rewards and incentives to people to take better care of themselves. At Phlegm, like AIA, we call this AIA vitality, right? Vitality makes everyone, and it makes everything better. If you take better care of yourself, we will take better care of you. You may know already about AI vitality, but what it does is it gives you the toolkit to lead a healthier and longer, better life. Because ultimately, our children, our posterity, depend on our longevity. And what we've seen across the board is dramatic improvements in blood pressure, in blood sugar, in body mass index, in bad cholesterol. We've seen thousands and thousands of our customers across Asia on our AI Vitality program see the benefits see the rewards of improved health outcome, improved cl clinical biometrics. So we recognize in AIA that engaging the customer, driving an intimate experience, moving away from just being a traditional life insurer that pays claims. We want to be a partner. We want to be relational. We don't want to be transactional. We want to be active. We don't want to be passive. We want to move the narrative of insurance away from death dying, fear, consequences. 
We want to focus the narrative on living, on vitality, on life, on wellness, on well-being, because that has to be the future. And as the leader in our industry, we have a deep responsibility to change and to pivot the narrative so that people across Asia Pacific can really have the tools to take better care of themselves. So, insurance must become more modernized, more humanized, more civilized, more personalized, more individualized, more customized. This is what AIA Plan Life is driving, and this is what we want you to be a part of. So, Healthy Along with Better Lives is our purpose. It's what we fundamentally stand for as a company. It is not a tagline, okay? There is a heavy burden of proof for AIA to be able to actually deliver, okay? It's one thing to say that we want our customers to live healthy along with better lives. It's another to actually be able to enable them, to enable them to achieve it. That is the goal. The goal is to move away, as I said, from fear and consequences and focus on the achievement of the healthy long of better life. That is why we are in our business. That is what we stand for. That is why we sell what we sell. So, this is a movement. We are building a movement. We are trying to build a coalition, a coalition of partners, of influencers, of people that share our beliefs, that want to help us reverse these trends. All of you focus on lifestyle. All of you understand what's at stake if we all do nothing. Guys, this is a call to action. And the reason that our friend and our ambassador, David Beckham, is here today in the Philippines is to join the voice, join the call to action. David is here because he can influence David is here because he can change the world. He can shape impressions, okay? David's humility, his humanity, his authenticity, his passionate commitment to his family and to fitness and well-being make him an exemplary ambassador. We are humbled, guys, to have David Beckham as our brand ambassador for AIA, okay? And as I tend to joke, he has 53,990,995 more followers on Instagram than I have. <laughs> so he does influence. So, we started our relationship with David as our ambassador in 2015, in 2017, excuse me, and we embarked on What's Your Why? We wanted to explore what are people's real underlying motivations for taking better care of themselves. And guys, what we learned was a what's your why was actually a who. All of our research, all of our findings proved, showed that what really drives us to make better decisions about our health, our wellness, and our longevity is about the people that we love. Okay? This is a massive understanding that's fueling our ability to communicate more precisely across Asia Pacific um, to enable people to live healthier, better, healthier, longer, and better lives. So, David will talk a lot about making small steps, about the little changes that you can make, and that's what I would encourage you to think about. That this is a journey, uh, this is an effort, and this is a long-term commitment, and there is no turning back. And what's at stake is massive. So, what we want to do now is show you a sizzle reel, if you will, of some of the great moments that we have shared with David um, over the last uh, couple of years. And I want to emphasize that it is our honor, okay? It is our privilege. We are so fortunate, all of us, to have David here today. You will see, David, you will understand exactly what I'm talking about, and you will see the power that David can bring to help shape the future and change the world. Please.
someone said to me earlier, you must be exhausted, you must be tired. Um, actually, it's been an amazing day. You know, to be able to spend obviously the morning with the kids, seeing how happy they were, seeing how looked after by the coaches they were, just seeing the smiles on their faces. I mean, it really energizes me personally. And obviously, to be back in the Philippines uh, is always nice, I must admit. I've just had a couple more invites, so I can't wait to come back. Um, but, you know, I love coming here. You know, I've been coming here, I've come here quite a few times now. Obviously, with the LA Galaxy, it was the last time. And just being here, the warmth with, with the people, you know, uh, being welcomed with open arms, especially when you're away from your family, it's always nice to be welcomed the way I get welcomed in the Philippines. So it's great to be here. How do you like being part of that football clinic this morning with the kids? What is it about working with the kids and playing with them? Do you feel like you're encouraging them, inspiring them to live healthier, better lives? I do. I think that that's obviously having four kids myself. Uh, I kind of understand children, but even before I had kids, you know, I used to like being around them. I used to like teaching them and, uh, and trying to get them to bend the ball uh, from time to time. So something like this this morning, it's what it's what I love doing. You know, at the start of the week when we first started the journey, of, you know, we've been away for about eight days. And this was the time where I was really quite kind of excited about it because I, obviously I knew that we'd be with the kids, I knew that we'd be doing something like that. And even though the majority of the children there today were probably of an age that actually they don't even remember my career, but they've probably seen it and heard from their parents, from grandparents, from their older siblings. I think, you know, that, that kind of thing is powerful because it also you know, when you talk to them, you can see as young as they are, they're listening and they're taking it all in. And that's what kids are like, you know, they're, they're like sponges. You tell them something and they, they take in what they want to take in. You know, my kids are exactly the same. Sometimes they choose not to listen, but you hope that they're listening to things that you're saying, the things that you're trying to teach them. Um, so that's obviously one of the powerful things, I think. Oh, I feel like my daughter just heard you say that and she's like, oh, so it's perfectly okay if I don't listen. Oh, no. All right. Um, David, you were saying earlier that the kids that you played with at the clinic probably don't remember your career. But you know, one of the kids that I interviewed um, actually said that it was really nice to be exposed to you and to be with you because now they see what they can actually become. Okay, everyone out here, everyone in the world knows you are a football legend and you've lived a healthy lifestyle your entire life. Can you share with everyone out here how we can just inculcate a bit of uh, health, healthy living, a healthy lifestyle into our daily life? Can you run by us your daily routine maybe? Well, my daily routine. Um, well, it can be all over the place, to be honest, because I have four children, so you know anything can happen. But you know, I try to, I try to keep to a regime where obviously I wake up in the morning, I wake the kids up, I make them breakfast, I take them to school, then go to the office and work out just before I go to the office, uh, and then go for lunch and then try and pick my children up. But like I said, it doesn't always happen because as parents, we always try to do the right thing and try to take care of our, of our kids. But obviously, you know, there's a lot of people out there that work that actually can't take their children to school or pick them up from school. And that's part of life. Everybody's, everybody's different. But, you know, but I try to, try, try to keep to that regime, but it doesn't always happen, like I say. But obviously, you know, having an understanding wife uh, and myself, I try to be understanding most of the time. Uh, you know, whenever, whenever I'm away, Victoria's at home, and whenever she's away, you know, I'm at home. But we try to do that, but like I said, everybody's different. Everybody tries to keep to the same regime, but it's it's not always possible. You know, I always want to eat the right things and drink the, the right amount of water that I need to drink, and we should all drink. But, you know, we all have complications on not being able to do that. So I try to stick to a balanced life. I was lucky that I played, you know, professional sport for 22 years, um, and that enabled me. Actually, it was my job to be healthy. It was my job to be fit, and I try to continue that now in in, in my life after, you know, after football. Um, and that's the way I try to look at things. You know, as much as I travel, I 
try to keep a check on how much I'm sleeping because you know an, an extra hour of sleep, just one more hour, makes a huge difference, and that's why I try to do it. You know, and that's you know, I try to do it. You know, I like how you talked about it and how you inculcate a healthy lifestyle in your daily routine, as difficult as it may be, with the amount of travel that you do, but you also particularly emphasize the importance of sleep. Stuart, you also tackled the importance of sleep. I'm just wondering, is this uh, something that AIA has taken upon themselves to really emphasize the importance of sleep? And is this something customers would like to hear? Yeah, thank you. We um, recognize that sleep deprivation across Asia Pacific is another epidemic. Asia is the most sleep deprived region of the world. You need about seven hours of sleep in adults. Um, across Asia, the average is about six hours and 10, 15 minutes. The impact on physical and mental well-being is profound. Um, and as the largest life and health insurer in the region, we have a very strong vested interest in raising awareness of sleep deprivation and trying to give people across Asia not only an understanding of what the benefits of better sleep are, but also looking at what a wonderful night sleep looks like. What are the tips, what are the tools we can give um, customers around the region to enable them to get a better night's sleep? Because sleep is probably the greatest performance drug we possess um, as human beings. So the initiative, uh, the effort that we've undertaken is hashtag one more hour. What we recognize is actually one more hour of sleep can make a world of difference in your overall physiological and mental well-being. And we're also trying to, in a way, debunk uh, stereotypes that are prevalent across Asia that in some way, shape, or form, sleep sacrifice is actually conducive to prosperity and well-being and a better life. Nothing could be farther from the truth. So those who advocate 996, working 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week, etc., you've heard of that, are leading young people to perhaps the biggest public health catastrophe in modern times. And so we believe we must take a stand. We must enable people to understand the benefits and give them the tools to get a better night's sleep. I like the importance of sleep. We could all do with more sleep. Uh, for David and Stuart, could you give everyone out here some tips, maybe, on how they can actually get more sleep, considering we feel there's so much to do every single day and there's little time. So what I'm doing is, uh, which for me was unthinkable, I'm, I'm stopping my coffee intake by about 5 o'clock in the afternoon because we know that there's residual caffeine in the bloodstream that prevents uh, uh, this is the onset of sleep. I'm actually closing the curtains, which I never used to do before I used to sleep with the curtains open. Um, and, I'm, and I'm taking a device, turning off all devices and putting them in another room. Um, and I'm, I'm switching off, curtains closed, and more caffeine. And it's, it's making a difference. And guys, I'm tracking my sleep with my Fitbit. So AI Vitality, in concert with our initiative, hashtag one more hour, has built in a sleep tracking module. So we are now actually rewarding our customers for the quality and duration of the sleep that they get. So we've brought it full circle, and I'm getting points, literally points and rewards, in the sleep that I'm getting now. I would urge you to do the same. You get rewarded for getting more sleep. What about you, David? How do you try and get more sleep considering you work in different time zones? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the challenging part for me. You know, obviously, I live in London, but obviously, I spend some time in the US, I spend some time in Asia. So I'm always traveling, so it's always, you know, about juggling and balancing it in the right way. Um, obviously, I track my sleep as well, and that's an important part for me to try and stay you know, align with everything that I, that I tried to do uh, back in London. Um, obviously, the, the caffeine is, is something that I didn't know I could drink coffee till five, but I thought it was 11 or 12, so I'm quite happy about that. Um, but obviously, you know, I try to do the same at home. You know, the most important part, Victoria won't let me sleep with the curtains open, actually. She likes the curtains closed, so. Uh, the curtains are, are, are closed where we sleep, but I think that when um, the most important thing for me is, you know, the, the devices. You know, obviously, when we're at dinner with the kids, it's important to put those down. I don't know it's hard because we work, we, we're always receiving, you know, emails about work and things like that. 
so that's an, that's a that's a difficult one for, for most people that have biz, businesses or work a lot. Um, but it's an important part of obviously resting the mind and the body and preparing yourself for a good night's sleep. So you know, at dinner I try to put it down and then have maybe an hour after dinner and then once obviously it becomes around nine o'clock then it goes away and you know I have to set the right example for my kids because my kids our kids watch everything that we do so it's important to set the right example for them. So if there's one tip that everyone can get from uh, this press conference is to put the gadgets away. I believe everyone is guilty of that. That's the first thing that we hold when we wake up and the last thing before we, we actually go to sleep. David, you are the AIA Global Ambassador. What's that journey been like so far? You know, I'm very lucky, you know, obviously since I retired. Uh, and even when I was playing, you know, I had amazing partners and sponsors. Um, and then obviously once I finished playing, actually, it was great because obviously it enabled me to be able to go into different markets and spend more time on the ground, getting to know my partners and, 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 and our amazing people on the ground. So that's one of the things that actually I've really enjoyed, being able to do something like that where, you know, I've been, I'm, I'm part of a company that literally is changes, changing people's lives. Uh, and it makes me proud to be part of something that really is a movement, that really is looking after people in the best possible way, not not for just now, but for 10, 20, 30 years of time. And I think that's such an important part because our children want us around for a long time. And it's important that we do the things now that keep us, you know, keep us fit, that keep us healthy, keep us, you know, on the road and things like that. So I think that's an, such an important part of my role. And since the, since the day that we sat down and we talked about the vision of what we can achieve, it's gone above and beyond anything that I ever expected. Because to see the people's lives that we are changing, to actually go into these territories to see what this company does, and to be an ambassador of this is something that I'm very proud of. How can everyone out here do something on their part to change somebody else's life? Because, you know, they might be feeling like, but I'm not a David Beckham. How can I actually impact another person's life? Do you have any tips for them? Well, I think as human beings, we're learning that talking is something that's very, and sharing is something that's very important, you know, in, in health, in your body, in your mind. I think the more and more you open up and the more and more you can talk to people about things that you're concerned about, you're worried about, or things that you're, you're pleased about, you know, those things are such an important part of life and, and, and well-being. Um, and that's what we do. It's what we, 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 we don't preach it, but we talk about it all the time. That's why we have to do it. You know, when we've been in different territories, we sit here and we talk to people we're not preaching to people, we're saying from our own experiences and from what we've seen, this is what we feel that works the best. It's up to people to, to, to obviously take that on board and to adjust it to their, to their well-being, um, but that's what we try to do. Stuart, do you have a message for all of our guests as to how they can live healthier, longer and better lives? That's a great question. I think, I think it starts with small steps and little changes that we can each make that move us gradually in a direction uh, that embraces uh, wellness and well-being. And I think we need to do it for people that we love. I think we learned that through our work with David, that it's, it's those around us that mean so much to us that can be so motivational for us to take better care of ourselves. So put the people you love in the picture and start with small steps that will take you on a journey of lifetime wellness. David? your message for them, how they can all have healthier, longer, and better lives. I think it's just a pleasure to actually be up here and to actually talk about our own experiences um, because that's what obviously we all know best. We can only talk about our own experiences and, and also what we can try to teach and, and, and make people try to learn from because we all want to live a healthier, better life. Uh, and obviously being part of this, like I said to you, makes me very proud. You know, we all want to live healthier and all the better lives and that's the most important thing. But 
one of the things that I always stand by and one of the things that we talk about all the time is those little changes sometimes can make become big changes and that's the most important thing. You always start with the small changes, the little steps. You heard it from Stuart Spencer and Mr. David Beckham. Another round of applause for that, please.